In this lecture, we'll be studying about the else if statement. So in the previous lecture, we have studied about the if and the else statements and we have seen an example to see their working. Now in that example, we saw that we wanted to add one more feature to that program that we wrote. So we will study about the else if statement in this lecture and we will see how to add that feature which we wanted to add in the previous lecture. Okay, so let's get started. So coming to the else if statement, the else if statement is used to specify a new condition if the first condition is false. So this is the use of the else if statement. So we have seen in the previous lecture when we use the if and the else, we saw that in if we used to give a condition and if the condition is true, then the block inside the if statement gets executed. Now, if it is not true, then the block inside the else statement gets executed. But here we are going to have something called else if. So we will see the flow and then we will try to understand its working. So here is the flow of the else if statement. So here also similarly like the previous case, we start with if statement. So here we are going to have an if condition. So we will check if the if condition is true or false. Now if the if condition is true, then we execute the code inside the if block. Now if the if condition is false, then we come to the else if condition. So in the previous case, we saw that if it was false, we just come to the else block directly and that's it. But here, if it is false, we come to the else if condition. So in else if also, there is going to be another condition and it will check if that condition is true or false. Now if that condition is true, then the code inside the else if block will get executed. And if it is false, then the code inside the else block will get executed. So here we see we are going to have else again. So basically it is like this. We are going to start with if, check the condition and then if it is false, we come to else if. And if that is also false, then we come to the else block. So this is the flow of the else if statement. So we see that there are going to be two conditions over here, the if condition and the else if condition. Okay, so let us see the syntax and then we will see an example to see it's working. So coming to the syntax, we start with the if condition. So if and then within parenthesis, we write the condition. Now, if this condition is true, then the block of code to be executed if condition 1 is true is written over here. So that means if this condition is true, this block will be executed. Now, if it is not true, then it will come over here, that is to the else if. So in else if also there will be a condition which is condition 2. Now it will check if condition 2 is true. So here we have the block of code to be executed if the condition 1 is false and condition 2 is true. That means if this is false and if this is true, then this particular block of code will be executed. Now if this is also false, that means if condition 1 is false and 2 is also false, then we have an else statement and this will be executed when condition 1 is false and condition 2 is also false. So this is the syntax that we have for the else if statement in C++. Okay, so let us take an example to understand its working. So we are going to take the same example we took in the previous lecture that was to take an input from the user and to check if that number is less than 10 or greater than 10. So coming to the example, here we have our header and then here we have the main function and inside main we declare an integer num which is initialized to 0 and then we ask the user to enter any number and then we accept that number to the variable num. Now here we are going to make use of the if and else if. So in the previous lecture if you remember, we were checking if the number was greater than 10 and if it was greater, we just printed it is greater and we just had one else block where we printed the number is less than 10 if this condition is false. But here we want to have three things. We want to print the number is greater than 10 if it is greater and we want to print it is less than 10 if it is less than 10 and we also want to print the number is equal to 10 if the user enters 10 itself. So we are going to accomplish that using the else if statement. So here we start with if and we say that if the number is greater than 10, then we print the number is greater than 10. And here we have this else if statement. So inside else if we are writing if the number is less than 10. So if this condition is true, then we print the number is less than 10. Now, what are the other possible cases? There can be three cases. One is the number is greater than 10, then the number is less than 10 and apart from these two cases, there is only one case that remains that is the number is equal to 10. So if both these conditions are false, that implies that the number is equal to 10. So inside this else block, we write the number is equal to 10. So in this way, we have the complete program. 
So we have the support if the user enters a number less than 10 or greater than 10 or even if it is equal to 10. So we are able to accomplish that using this else if. So let us run this program in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working as we expected. So here we come to Visual Studio Code and I have that same program written here. So I have saved the name of the file with the name elsif1.cpp. So let us try to compile this program. So let me pull up the terminal a little bit here and let's compile it. So for compiling I type g++ elsif1.cpp which is the name of the file and I press enter. So we see that the program has compiled successfully and there are no errors. Now the default output file name is a.exe. So let's run that. So I type dot slash a.exe and I press enter. Now let's see, yes, it is running properly. It is saying enter any number. So let me enter 12 here. And if I press enter, it says that the number is greater than 10. So the greater than part is working properly. Now let me run the program again and enter a number that is less than 10. So let's say I enter 5. Now if I press enter, we see the number is less than 10. It is executed correctly. Now let me enter exactly 10 and let's see if this part is working correctly. So I run the program again and now I enter 10 and if I press enter it says the number is equal to 10. So we see that this part is also working correctly which implies that our if else if and else all are working correctly and in the right way that we expected. Okay so that is the function of the else if statement. Now let's take one more example to write another program using this else if statement. So here in our example number 2 we are going to write a program for a restaurant let's say for example. So we want to write a simple program for the user to select either coffee or tea. So let's say that the user is having an interface and he has two options, one for coffee and two for tea. So if the user enters one, that means he is making an order for coffee. And if he enters two, that means he is placing an order for tea. So we need to accept the orders in that way. So what are the options that we have here? So the user should enter 1 for coffee and 2 for tea but there is a possibility that he may enter some other value as well. So if the user enters some other values other than 1 or 2 then we also have to say that sorry that is a wrong option. So we need to consider these three things 1, 2 and the invalid options. So keeping this in mind let us try to write the program for this. Okay, so coming to the program for the example that we discussed, here we have our main function and then we are declaring a variable called choice which is of the type integer and I'm initializing it to zero. So this variable choice will be used for accepting the choice that is given by the user. So we put a cout statement here saying enter and I want it to come in the next line so I put an std end line here. So one for coffee and then again I want the next line to be printed in a new line. So we put another end line here and 2 for t okay and then we put one more new line. So it will say enter 1 for coffee and 2 for t. Now it will wait for the user input and we will take the user input into the variable choice using this scene. Okay so now we have to check what the user has entered. So now we are writing if choice equal to equal to 1. Now what is this equal to equal to? This is something new that we have encountered. So equal to equal to means it is an equality operator that is checking if the value is equal to the number that is entered here. So if we use a single equal to symbol that becomes an assignment operator. Like for example here I use choice equal to zero. So if you write just a single equal to C++ treats it as an assignment. So that means the zero is assigned to choice. But if you put two equal to then it is going to compare. It is going to check if this value and this value are the same. So that is the use of this equal to equal to operator. So we are checking if choice is equal to 1. So if it is equal to 1 what does it mean? It means he has ordered for coffee. So we want to just print a line saying your coffee is on its way. Thank you. Now if the user has entered choice number 2. So here we are going to check again else if choice is equal to equal to 2. That means if the choice that the user entered is equal to 2. That means he has made a choice for t. So we are going to print a line saying your t is on its way. Thank you. Okay, so these were the only two choices that the user had. Now there is a possibility that the user could have entered some other value other than 1 or 2. So in that case we have to print you have entered a wrong option. So that we put inside the else block. So if choice equal to 1 we do this. Else if choice equal to 2 we do this else. Now this else means anything apart from choice equal to 1 and choice equal to 2 then we print you have entered a wrong option then we complete our program. So this is how we can write the program for this case. Now let us run it in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working properly.
So here we have that program written down in Visual Studio Code and I have saved it in the file named lsif2.cpp. So let us compile and run this program and see if it is working properly. So let me pull up the terminal and here let's compile it. So we type g++ lsif2.cpp which is the name of the file and press enter and let's see yes it is compiled correctly there are no errors. Now let us run the output file which will have the default file name a.exe. So we type dot slash a.exe and I press enter and now it says enter 1 for coffee 2 for tea. Now it is waiting for the user input. So let me enter 1 now and press enter. So it says your coffee is on its way. Thank you. So it is working fine. Now let me run this program again and this time let me enter 2. So if I enter 2 it says your tea is on its way. Thank you. So we see that is also working fine. Now let me run this program once more. Now this time let me enter an invalid number which is not 1 nor 2. So let's say I entered 3 which is not available in our options. So if I press enter it says you have entered a wrong option. So we see that the if, the else if and the else part are all working correctly. So that is how we can write the program for this case that we have discussed. So with that I hope you have understood the working of the else if and you have seen its uses. So I hope this lecture about else if statement is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.